And there is some news just coming in at this point in time. India rips apart Bangladesh in Kanpur. Famous win for India at the Green Park, where Rohit and company win by seven wickets. Well, India wraps up the series 2-0. India firmly on top in the WTC standing. So it's great news for India in Kanpur. I'm going to, in fact, go straight across to Sunil Subramaniam, Ashwin's coach. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, well, great news for all fans. How do you look at uh, how India really has, in fact, uh, I would say humiliated Bangladesh in a way, uh, though I wouldn't want to use that word, but really we've ripped them apart in Kanpur today. Yeah, thanks for calling me here. Yeah, I wouldn't use the same words either because uh, we'd expected Bangladesh to put up a far better show having come out from a, a very historic tour of Pakistan where their batsmen actually they stayed a long time in the wicket, uh, they battled long hours and they really worked hard for their wins. So we'd expected that uh, Bangladesh, Bangladesh batting will put up a better show. To that extent, uh, it was a bit disappointing, but full marks to our side. You know, the 40 wickets that ran, 31 wickets have gone to our main goals. Uh, Ashwin 11, Bumra 11, Jadeja 9. And uh, the bowling attack seems well oiled. And this match was, this match, the batsman made a game out of it. So, uh, uh, we are doing well. But I really expected Bangladesh to go to the better show. All right. I'm also, in fact, going to go straight across to my colleague, uh, our consultant, uh... Uh, editor Nikhil Naz, who is also with us. Uh, essentially, uh, Nikhil, two days it essentially rained, but India has pulled off a win. How do you look at this uh, huge development from today? Well, Sneha, it will definitely go down uh, in the history books. This particular victory that India has registered over Bangladesh, yes. Uh, it wasn't a thrilling series, yes. Uh, this win hasn't come in Australia or in overseas conditions, yes. You want against the best team uh, in the world right now in Bangladesh. All those things are usually taken into consideration when you uh, regard a particular victory as one of your best of all times. But I'd still include this particular test win as one of the biggest wins that India has registered. And that's primarily because of the paucity of time that you had in this match. As we're mentioning, uh, you almost lost three days because of rain is remaining. And for even the staunch cricket supporters of the Indian cricket team, they did not see a result coming in this test match when play got underway on day four. Everyone that you spoke of was talking about a dull, drab draw that you're going to get because if out of the five days, three days get washed out, you seldom get a result. But credit to this Indian team under the captaincy of Rohit Sharma, under uh, the leadership of Gautam Gambhir as coach, they played a different brand of cricket. And I think years down the line, when you look back at this test match, you will look at India's batting approach that came about in uh, the first innings. They got 285 runs uh, at a strike rate of uh, 8 and over. Now, that is something that you associate not even with ODI cricket, with T20, the shortest form of the game. Seldom do you see this sort of performance by the batters in the long format, in, in a test match format. And what that did, that ensured that plenty of crowds turned up to the stadium. It was blockbuster all around. Social media was flooded yesterday with the batting approach of the Indian team. Just to get an idea, what is it that the Indian team fulfilled yesterday? They broke so many records in batting that if you went around the fastest ever 50 in the history of Test cricket, the Indian team got the fastest ever 100, the fastest ever 150, the fastest ever 200, the fastest ever 250 in the history of Test cricket. All these records were notched up by the Indian batting. So that's why I say that this Test match is one for the ages. Nikhil also, in fact, Ashwin's uh, coach uh, is with us and uh, I'd like you also to come in and take a few questions from Sunil Subramaniam. Uh, today, Sunil Subramaniam, before I hand it over to Nikhil, how proud are you as coach as far as Ashwin's uh, five-wicket haul is concerned? That a stupendous, stupendous performance from Ashwin. No, no, but my role doesn't stop with being his coach. I've managed his Indian team for two years. So I know everybody, the whole team there. So I feel good for everybody, not just him. He's special, no doubt. But especially the bowling unit. But I must add a, a, a bit of caution to what I've seen. See, well, we are uh, now going to, we're going to have two five test series, one in Australia and one in England. England, of course, after the World Test Championship cycle. But what I have been observing is that starting from the Sri Lanka tour, when four spinners bowled us out, 
although it's an ODI game, and even in the Chennai test that, uh, but for Ashwin and Jadeja, that bail was out with that knock, I am seeing a bit of solidity that is in there in the batting. I require them to be a little more. The talent is there. I mean, we can't be it's really superb. But in terms of application, I think we've, uh, we shouldn't get carried away and need to apply more as batsmen so that we face the challenges of, of three fast bowlers and later line way. That would be my first uh, reaction to what India has been doing. Of course, take no credit. As Nikhil said, take no credit away to the record being established here. I mean, the Rohit's captaincy, I think, that is absolutely brilliant. And he's making the game move forward. All the positives, but I still think there's one department where we, we really need to apply ourselves more. And I hope three test matches in New Zealand that we're going to play at home. A couple of the guys get some runs out of their belt and chase enough balls, and so they're completely ready for the tour of Australia. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, if you were to look at this win, I, I did, uh, you know, uh, mention all the records that this Indian team has notched up. Uh, the one other uh, thing that really stands out in this win are the kind of pitches that we saw for these two test matches. Now, it's been a long time coming in Indian cricket at home to get these sort of pitches. Yes, we saw in the England series uh, more sporting wickets being offered, but this time around, you saw a bit of juice left in the pitch in both test matches, whether that was in Chennai or in Kanpur, a bit of grass left uh, on the pitch. Uh, keeping that in mind, these are not typical Indian conditions that we've seen uh, in the last five, six years, if I can add. Uh, with that in mind, Taking a Bangladesh team, uh, you know, performing with the bat, uh, with that sort of uh, performance that we saw, and more importantly, the bowlers coming to fore, even in conditions that were more conducive to batting than. Uh, yeah, see, we didn't uh, we didn't get the so-called. I mean, that's, a lot of it was a lot of hype that so-called dusty dust ball term. We didn't get that, but we got two different wickets. One was a red soil wicket which had bounce. And the other was a typical black soil wickets where you can't get much bounce. There is reasonable bounce, but the skill levels are a little different to extract bounce. And even then, towards the fourth or fifth day, the bounce starts keeping low. But they were good, they were good enough tracks for good cricket, be it domestic cricket or be it international cricket. So the tracks were good. What was heartening that I could see was the way uh, Bumrah, Bumrah is of course world class. So the, the parameter for changing of a length for a fastball isn't much. So he stuck to his task and you know he'll do his job. But what really hired Part of me was the way the spinners adapted tactically to do different wickets. For example, when I saw Ashwin ball, I watched the match in Chennai. When I saw him ball, despite getting the drift, because he knows he's going to get bounce of uh, red soil wicket, his lines were more towards middle, middle and leg, not exactly leg. And the fields were kept as decoys. And he bowled that line brilliantly. Now, when it came down to this test match, you could see that you're only not going to get that much bounce. So with the drift, he was bowling on the leg, leg and middle, and set traps wherein the guys fell for it. So, what I'm trying to say, I was really happy with the way the bowlers adapted to different wickets, which was not what they have been getting in recent times of being ranked on us. Yes, that itself is great. But I, as I said earlier, on the same wickets, you probably get the same kind of challenges when you go to Australia. Because you would be not starting like last time when we started in my You would be starting and they've given us, we'd be starting the game at Perth and then they're going to Brisbane and then go to Adelaide. So, you will get uh, things like this where they can just well, always really well to see the way they will bowl on those wickets. That's why exactly I want the batsman also to get runs under the belt. So that you know, we know that, yes, under alien conditions, it won't be far too different from what you're playing at home. And there's a bit of a comfort factor. So once you get those runs going, I want to see those runs, the batsman getting those runs on these tickets. Step to the new building series. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Subramaniam, as well, for joining us, giving us that perspective on the test match and that one point that he does make. Tougher battles lie ahead for the Indian team. You've got New Zealand visiting you for three test matches. But more importantly, after that, it's the Border Gavaskas Trophy that India would be travelling to Australia to. That's going to be one of the most important uh, moments in the calendar of Indian cricket going forward. So we'll keep an eye out on that as well. For the moment, that's all that we have on our updates on this famous win that India have registered here in Kanpur.